This is Marawi City, in the south of the Philippines. The gunshots are consecutive and endless. That's the main battle area where government troops are facing off with Islamic State supporters. From this rooftop, we can see the side of the city that's right in the heart of the battle. Look a little past the buildings. That's Lanao Lake. It's the entry and escape route the military is closely watching to make sure nobody gets in or out of the battle area. It's day 120 of the conflict. On May 23, the military entered the city and raided a safe house where Isnilon Hapilon, the so-called emir of ISIS in Southeast Asia, was reportedly spotted. He escaped, but his supporters went out into these streets, waving black Islamic State flags. The terrorists were led by the homegrown Mauti group. It turned into a full-fledged war between the military and the terrorists. So now we're standing here just 200 meters from the main battle zone. Behind me is a former Mauta stronghold that was just occupied by the military in August. On the right are two pilot schools that were also used by the terrorists to hide and plan their operations. And far back over there is Densalan College, which again, Densalan College was a Mauta stronghold until it was occupied by the military. And you can see in front of me that right there is a 105 cannon that is used by the military and it is a direct hit so because we are very very close to where the enemy is uh, a soldier will come there turn it on and in two to three seconds it will immediately fire towards towards the enemy and because it is such a short range it's 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 a direct hit and it's very very powerful and just turning a left over here, that street that you see, that is already where the main battle zone is. So we are very careful not to peek as there has been, there have been soldiers that have made a mistake of literally just taking a quick look and getting shot in the head. So this is a very dangerous area right here. I'm Natasha Gutierrez, Southeast Asia correspondent for Rappler. That's Jeff Digma, Rappler's videographer. This is what the buildings in the war zone look like from the inside. They're riddled with bullet holes and damaged by an assortment of bombs and grenades. Look closely. Those large holes in the walls, like doorways, were created by the terrorists. These allowed them to avoid airstrikes or to move from one building to another without being detected by soldiers from the outside. This has been the biggest challenge for the military. Experts say the terrorists planned the attack on Marawi for months. Foreign fighters have been coming in as early as January 2017. ISIS, which is well-trained to fight in cities, funded and advised the Mauti group on urban warfare. Their goal was to establish a caliphate here. Before the fighting, Marawi City was home to about 200,000 residents, 90% Muslim. This was someone's home. Books and bedding and personal items are still on the floor, remnants of fleeing civilians. Marawi was the center of trade in Lanao del Sur province. As ISIS loses territory in Iraq and Syria, they seek to expand to Southeast Asia. Marawi city was an attractive choice, but the military vowed it would never happen. Philippine soldiers are more used to jungle fighting than urban warfare. The enemy's network of rat holes and trenches are long and complex. That's me walking through. Improvised explosive device, or IEDs, which they leave in their trail, also slow down government troops, in addition to booby traps and Molotov bombs. The enemy learned from foreign fighters how to improve sniping capabilities. Even military tanks can only do so much because the terrorists are armed with .50 caliber machine guns and rocket-propelled grenades that can pierce through metal. The military says it has no choice but to use airstrikes to target the enemy. What's left? Only heartbreaking shells of buildings. Houses reduced to rubble, like this one.
Jeff and I are allowed to go deeper and closer into the main battle area by the military, on the condition we stay close to the troops. We arrive at this five-story building, which used to have a hospital on the ground floor and residences on the higher floors. The writing on the walls are haunting. This was a stronghold of the terrorists because the structure is strong and high, and right in the center of the city. It took the military over two months to take over this area. A huge achievement. Retaking this area meant the troops pushed back the enemies into a smaller space towards the lake. The military says the end of the war is nearing. Today, the building is used as a tactical command post of the 3rd Scout Ranger Battalion. It's about 300 meters from the front lines. It smells of gunpowder. The gunfire and explosions are loud. When we visit, most of the troops are out in the front lines fighting. They only come back here to meet and plan. This is Lieutenant Colonel Mon Almodovar, commander of the 3rd Scout Ranger Battalion. We're on the rooftop of the building now. From here, it's easy to see the state of the city. The Mautes tried to prevent us from coming into the city. They tried to block all possible access of the military. They had someone guarding those, especially the roads. Of course they occupied the major buildings, the high, solid ones like this one, to give them a good advantage. And you can see Dunsalan College. There are solid campuses there, buildings. They were everywhere there. And that building there, they had a lot positioned there as well. I think that Senator Nino Aquino College. The university belt was a former stronghold. I ask him why there are blankets hanging on one side. Well, of course the enemies are still there on the other side. That's the front. That's where the front line is. Before, this whole thing was covered because they were enemies from all sides. However, now they're a little farther away. The front line is about 300 meters away, but you still need to cover this because the bullets can still reach us from the current location of the enemy. So this, we use this as a sniper hide. From time to time, we have snipers to position here to guard at night, especially when the nearby areas were not yet cleared. Now that our troops have gotten closer though, our sniper has repositioned over there. But sometimes they still use this, especially when targets are far away. So that's why this is all covered. A military sniper takes his position behind sandbags. He peeks through, aims towards the enemy, and then... We stay low and hide for cover. With careful precision, he shoots another. On our way down, we're told to duck and run in case the enemy counterattacks. attacks 